Uh, some mis amigos. Alright, I got a lot on the table here. Not sure where I'm going to start. Um, I think I want to start with the comments that I received. Um, yeah, I think I'll start here. And um, 17 Deep 7 Savage 7 says The current Pope Francis is the Antichrist and he's been mobilizing a lot recently to lay low until the super war. Alright, so um, th this idea of a super war, yeah, there's a super war coming. It's at the end of the world. Now, if you notice here in Matthew 24, Mark 13, Luke 21, Jesus specifically addresses the idea of war and he says, You shall hear of wars and rumors of war. See that you be not troubled. For all these things must come to pass, but the end is not yet. All right, so don't be troubled by you know <laughs> uh, by what you're seeing on the news. All right, they're gonna try to trouble you. They're gonna try to upset you. That's how they hook you in. All right, they get you upset. They get you worried. They get you scared. That's how they hook you in. That's the hook. <laughs> all right, so. A nation shall rise against nation, kingdom against kingdom. There shall be famine, or famines, excuse me, famines, pestilences, earthquakes in diverse places. All these are the beginning of sorrows. All right, so these things are going to happen. All right, wars, nation against nation, kingdom against kingdom. The great big super war is at the end of the world. When Jesus comes in the clouds of heaven, all right, the sun will be darkened, the moon shall not give her light, and the stars shall fall from heaven, and the powers of the heavens shall be shaken. This is the super war. The super war is at the end of the world. Notice here in Matthew 24, it says, All the tribes of the earth mourn. In Revelation uh, chapter 1, it says, All kindreds of the earth shall wail. Right? Then again in Luke 21, you notice it says, Men's hearts will be failing them for fear. Alright, that's just because they know it's the super war. All right, and then of course in Second Peter chapter three, when Jesus comes in the clouds of heaven, the heaven shall pass away with a great noise, and the elements shall melt with fervent heat. The earth also, and the works that are therein, shall be burned up. All right, so that's the super war. All right, but those of us that are born of the Spirit of God, we will be lifted up into the air just like what we read in matthew 24 mark 13 luke 21 first thessalonians 4 first corinthians 15 we will be lifted up into the air to meet the lord and so shall we ever be with the lord okay just this goes back from genesis and this is prophesied taught all throughout the bible from genesis to revelation we will be lifted up Right. In order to understand Genesis 3.15, when the Lord says to the serpent, I will put enmity between thee and the one, <clears throat> and between thy seed and her seed, it shall bruise thy head, and thou shalt bruise his heel. To understand that properly, God is going to stomp his foot on the head of the serpent. We are with God. Right. When we are born of the Spirit of God, God is in us, and we are in God. We are one with God. We are with God when God stomps his foot on the head of the serpent All right. and again First Thessalonians 4 for the Lord himself shall descend from heaven with a shout with the voice, uh, voice of the archangel and with the trump of God and the dead in Christ shall rise first and we which are alive and remain shall be caught up together with them in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air and so shall we ever be with the Lord of course we're lifted up out of this world just as Moses delivered his people out of the wickedness of Egypt 
so also will the Lord Jesus Christ deliver us out of the wickedness of this evil world. Okay. All right. So, uh, I, no, I appreciate uh, that comment uh, and, and all comments. All right. But we don't have to worry about no super war. Right, war happens, maybe, maybe it don't. If it does, what are you gonna do? You can't stop it. Um, and but if you believe in the Lord Jesus Christ, you have absolutely nothing to to worry about. If you are born of the Spirit of God, you're good. Fear them that can kill. Or I'm sorry. Do not fear them that can kill the body, and not the soul. Fear him which can kill both body and soul in hell. That fear God, right? Don't be afraid of the Pope. Don't be afraid of the, what Dan Rather says on the 6 o'clock news. Fear God. All right? And then uh, Matt Allred. He says the millennial reign of Christ is a period of time on his earth. The original earth created in Genesis 1 verse 1 where Jesus physically reigns over living people who have not yet faced the white throne judgment with the resurrected saints reigning with him. This does not negate the fact that he reigns forever. I'm not going to waste an hour watching someone declare that what is written in the Bible is false. All right, well... Thanks, Matt. Appreciate that. All right, and the problem number one, the Bible never talks about a millennial reign of Christ. It's not found anywhere at all. So if you want to have that discussion, let's have it, man. Let's have it. You don't have to, you know, watch my videos. That's fine, but let's have that conversation. What's wrong with that? All right. Let's have that conversation. So, um, you know, this is the millennial reign of Christ is a period of time on this earth. That's not in the. That's not anywhere. The original earth created in Genesis one verse one. What? What's that? What are you talking about? I don't understand that at all. Because in Genesis one verse one. God created the heaven and the earth. Then he created the firmament and called it heaven. So now God has created the heavens and the earth. So that's an addition to the original earth in Genesis 1. And the earth was without form and void. Well, I, you know, I don't want to go over all that. But uh, the fact of the matter is that the earth back then was destroyed by water and is now reserved unto fire. And there's going to be a new heavens and a new earth. The new earth is not going to be the old earth. Is that what you thought? Because what's done is done and what will be will be. Alright, so I appreciate these comments, man, but, uh, y you know, I get it. Your worldview is being challenged, and you don't like it, right? I get it. And because you're putting all your, you're putting all the chips in, into this idea that you're going to be ruling this world and dominating the women. And you're going to be having sexual intercourses with as many women as you please. And if you take away the millennial reign, you take away that. I get it. That's... You don't want nobody messing with your fantasy. I get it. The reality, that's never going to happen. You, this idea that you're going to be resurrected and having children, that's not going to happen. Now you can pretty it up as any way you want. 
and you call it romantic relations having children make it sound as nice and sweet as possible but at the end of the day it's still dirty stinky sex and there is no sex at after the end of this world sex is a part of this world it's not part of the world to come all right and i don't know uh, what to tell you that i mean you've been lied to what can i say you know people snookered you tricked you beguiled you you believed it because you wanted you wanted this fantasy this fantasy of yours is not reality all right first john chapter 2 love not the world neither the things that are in the world if any man love the world the love of the father is not in him for all that is in the world the lust of the flesh the lust of the eyes and the pride of life is not of the father but is of the world and the world passes away and the lust thereof but he that doeth the will of God abideth forever. All right, so this whole childbearing thing is part of this world. If you would have read, <clears throat> excuse me, if you would have read Genesis 3, you would have known that this is part of the curse of eating of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. And then because of that, in this world we have to go through childbearing but I'm, this is the way it's supposed to be it you know I mean let's face it if this doesn't happen we're never born so in a sense it's a good thing because we would not have been born we would not have eternal life but because it happened then God put the curse on the serpent he put the curse on the woman and the curse on the husband. Uh, and upon the woman he said, I will greatly multiply thy sorrow and thy conception. In sorrow thou shalt bring forth children, and thy desire shall be to thy husband, and he shall rule over thee. Now this is coming to an end at the end of the world. If you, you know, you, you could have figured this out just by understanding verse 15 of course it's easy for us to say now because it's all been revealed in the new testament but if you consider verse 15 when the lord says to the serpent i will put enmity between thee and the woman and between thy seed and her seed there's going to be a separation between the saved and the unsaved it shall bruise thy head and thou shalt bruise his heel his heel notice that it says not her hill but his hill meaning the savior of her seed right the savior of her seed is the lord jesus christ he's going to stomp his foot on the head of the serpent destroying evil forever all right so uh we have that to look forward to a life of e uh of eternal um uh, peace and love <laughs> really uh, I mean that's what I put my hope into everlasting life where there is no death no sin no sorrow no crying no pain all of that is going to be done away with and that's the promise we read here in Genesis 3 all right and, and again this is uh, more evidence that uh, that uh, the childbearing is part of this world and then, of course, Jesus is asked specifically about, you know, in the resurrection, whose wife will, you know, be of the, you know, the seven brothers. And Jesus says, yeah, yeah. forget all that. He says, in the resurrection, they neither marry nor are given in marriage, but are as the angels of God in heaven. See, that's a nice, nice way, a nicer way than saying in the resurrection 
they're not going to be having dirty, stinky sex. All right. So there is no marriage. There is no giving in marriage. Now you're old enough to know what happens when people get married. All right. So that's not going to happen. There's not going to be childbearing in the kingdom to come. In the life to come hereafter. All right. It's not going to happen and just like I I showed you in first John chapter 2 the world passes away and the dirty stinky sex thereof all right it's all going to be done away with so um where are we at so Matt Allred if you want to discuss that let's have that that, that discussion because I know I already know your fantasy of a millennial reign is based solely on the idea that you're going to be having dirty, stinky sex. Over, what, unsaved women? That's where I want to further this discussion. Are you going to be having dirty, stinky sex over unsaved women or saved women? Or both? Right, how is that going to work? Because, I mean, if you're honest, you'll admit, hey, well, yeah, we're going to be having... We're going to be having sex. All right, here. Uh, I forgot. Today's, today's the 19th. <laughs> All right, so I, I'm, I forgot something unrelated to all this. Okay. Uh, so this was, I don't know, yesterday, I guess. And uh, from Leslie Dayton. And this is every single day. I've been showing you this. It's everybody. Everybody that preaches the millennial reign is it's a weird, bizarre religion. All right, in the comment section, I won't play the video for you because blah, blah 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 blah. It probably says the same thing. It's probably a one of those uh, you know chat bot things or whatever you call it. Uh, only believers enter the millennium. Okay, so imagine this. This is the scenario. Jesus comes in the clouds of heaven, and there's uh, only the believers will be living after this. All right, that only believers enter the millennium. See, their idea is that the millennium is after Jesus comes. All right, so Jesus comes, and then we enter the millennium, but only the believers. But by the end of their will be a multitude that reject Jesus. So, you're going to go from having eternal life to not having eternal life. In other words, Jesus is a liar. Now, he straight up lies. In, for example, in John chapter 11, when he says, Whosoever liveth and believeth in me shall never die. Jesus lied. According to Leslie here. Leslie Dayton. Leslie Dayton. And this is the whole premise of the millennial reign is that Jesus Christ is a liar. That's not a small thing. You can save a lot of people a lot of time if you just came out and said, Jesus Christ is a liar. And don't worry about nothing else because nothing else will matter. <laughs> I mean, really. If you believe he's lying, then nothing matters. All right. Now, yeah. did I show you John 11? Okay. Verse 25. Jesus says, I am the resurrection and the life. He that believeth in me, though he were dead, yet shall he live. And whosoever liveth and believeth in me shall never die. Except Leslie Dayton disputes that. Is there a way to get around this? At the end, there will be a multitude that will re reject Jesus, but they'll never—they won't die. 
Are you going to try to go in that direction? Well, they reject Jesus, and they live, but they still live forever. Uh, gosh. There are people born in the millennium. Now, I'll, on that, I would agree with. But that's not what she... She's not talking about right now. So I don't agree with it. She's talking about after Jesus comes in the clouds of heaven. People will be having sex. Dirty, stinky sex. And having babies. Babies are born and people can live hundreds of years. So they're going to be having... Oh, you're going to be having all kinds of stinky, kinky... Sex. Stinky kinky. Kinky stinky sex. For hundreds of years. For a thousand years. Stinky kinky sex. I can't remember. Where's that? She's saying uh, well, people will be dying at a hundred years old or something like that. Uh, for the child shall, be, uh, shall die at a hundred years old. But the sinner... Being at 100 years old shall be a curse. Wait a second. What'd she say? Babies are born and people can live 100 years old. It is considered a curse to die. Well, doggone it. It doesn't say the sinner died at 100. It says the sinner is a cursed. Is a, the sinner is 100 years old. Is cursed. It doesn't say the sinner dies, it says the child dies. Alright. Now, obviously, I I don't know how people don't understand this. Uh, you know, I, these guys, I'm telling you, these L Leslie Dayton's of the world, they don't put any thought into what they say. They don't put any thought into what the Bible says. I don't see how you could possibly get this wrong. It doesn't require that much brain activity, does it? Just to think? Hey, the child and the sinner are both 100 years old. One is a child. The other is a sinner. And that's not hard, is it? Now course you have to be a believer to see that we are the children of God and you know like for example um, let's do it this way see if I can find it yeah in Matthew 18 and Jesus says verily I say unto you except ye be converted and become as little children, you shall not enter into the kingdom of heaven. See, we must become as little children. So that's one way to look at it. And then, of course, another way is to realize, hey, we are the children of Israel. All right, and then we can compare this with First Peter chapter 2. Uh, but in Exodus 19 it says, Ye shall be unto me a kingdom of priests and a holy nation. These are the words which thou shalt speak unto the children of Israel. And that's those of us that believe in the Lord Jesus Christ today. Alright, of course, First Peter chapter 2 says, You are a chosen generation, a royal priesthood, and a holy nation, a peculiar treasure or peculiar oh man i just butchered it i don't know what it says it says something let's find out exactly just so i don't get this wrong confuse somebody you are a chosen generation a royal priesthood a holy nation a peculiar people that you should show forth praises of him who has called you out of darkness into his marvelous light all right same thing same thing. We are the children of Israel. So when Jesus says, unless you be converted and become as little children, he's telling us we are the children of Israel. We are the children 
of God. And of course, we go to 1 John chapter 3 and read it says, Beloved, now are we the sons of God? We are the children of God. Same thing. There's no difference. No difference. Okay, so where are we at here? All right, so um, this idea that we're having stinky, kinky sex for a thousand years, that's not in the Bible. That's your weird, weirdo fantasy. Uh, while you're mixing it in with uh, the the Bible, that's that's even weirder. Uh, and it's straight up weird. It's straight up weird. But uh, if we go back to Second Peter chapter three, and then also in Jude, uh, I can't see these are getting too small now. All right, so all right, let's go first. Um, in well, in Second uh, Peter chapter three, second maybe I don't have it open. 2 Peter chapter 3 says, Knowing this first, that there shall come in the last day scoffers walking after their own lust. Jude 18, how that they told you there should be mockers in the last time who should walk after their own ungodly lust. And here we got Leslie Dayton saying, Hey, and there's coming a thousand year period where we're going to be having dirty, stinky, kinky sex. Woohoo. Well, looking forward to that, huh? Yeah, but dabba do. Problem is that's your fantasy. That's not reality. All right, so enough of that. Let's move on to something else here. Little known facts, but important facts. Might be, uh, is that the same? Oh, that's yeah. That's Leslie. That's Leslie. Let's go back here. I think I already went over this. Matt Allred believes the same thing. Dirty, stinky, kinky sex for a thousand years. All right. Now you want to talk about that? Let's have that discussion. Because I noticed these people, they don't want to talk about it. They just want to make the claim. And they don't want to talk about it, have discussion, and go further into thought regarding this idea of sexual activity after Jesus comes and I suspect it's because their doctrine will be utterly challenged and completely destroyed by the Word of God okay so I want to encourage you Matt if you care about the truth let's have that discussion all right I better leave that open hold on a second uh, what do we got here? Jerry Foster, the new millennium, thousand years of dirty, stinky, kinky sex. All right. Oh, he says something here. Where are we at? 29. I don't remember what he says, but let's listen. I'll go back the conclusion. Let's do it right here. Let's see what he says. Right now, well, Jerry, I, I came to church expecting this nice little message on how to be good or how to feed the poor. And it's like Lord of the Rings, man. We're talking about dragons and beasts and battles and kingdoms. We're just missing orcs and elves. What is going on? And we do have plenty of messages on those other things, right? We do. But sometimes uh, Lord we need a strong wake-up call. You know, sometimes we can get consumed with this physical world and all that it pretend, and all that goes with it. The guy talks with a lisp. But we have to be reminded that there is a spiritual realm. There is a real spiritual battle going on. You guys, God is there real. Is. The angels are real. The devil is a real being. All right, there we go. There it is. The devil is a real being. The devil's not a real being. Where, where do you get that idea? The devil is a spirit absent of God, and that there it's not a it's not a being. Okay, that's ridiculous, man. Well, where's the devil at right now? Uh, is that him? You called him a real being. Not just a spirit, but a being. Uh, first of all, all right, we go to uh, we go to Exodus 20. You remember um, there's this thing that they call, uh, you probably heard it, they, they call it the Ten Commandments. Well, the very first 
of the Ten Commandments is thou shalt have no other gods before me. All right, so number one, Satan, or the devil, the devil is not a god. The devil is not a being. All right, the devil is a spirit absent of God. All right, so it's not a being. What do you think? The devil is a being that's in heaven? Is that what you think? Or you think the devil is a being on earth? Well, let, let's take it. Can you take a picture of him for me? What was he flesh and blood? Has he got green blood? What, let's talk about that a little bit. Well, of course he can't. Because you're, you're equating comic books with reality. Your fantasy books are not true. All right. So, anyways, I just want to share that with you. This, it, good grief, man! I mean, nobody can get it right. It's incredible. And I, well, I already know why they can't get it right. It's because. <clears throat> they are driven by sexual desires, and they do not believe the Bible that they hold in their hands. And because they don't believe, they are delusional. All right, just like what we read. Here, let me find it. Isaiah 66, I will, or I also will choose their delusions and will bring their fears upon them because when I called, none did answer. When I spake, they did not hear, but they did evil before mine eyes and chose that in which I delighted not because these guys don't believe the Bible that they hold in their hands. They are delusional, right? When I call, they don't answer. When I spake, they do not hear. All right, they are not of us. They're pretending to be one of us, but they are not one of us. Just like what Jesus says, in, uh, you know, when Jesus is asked about the end of the world, what shall be the sign of thy coming and of the end of the world? The very first thing he says is, Take heed that no man deceive you. For many shall come in my name, saying that I, Jesus, am Christ, and shall deceive many. Now it's it's incredible to me that somebody like this could deceive so many people, but he does. He, I mean, him and his cohorts, him and his posse, they all teach the same thing. They all learn from one another, and they all teach the same thing, and they all have the money and the power to be the ones that stand on the stage or behind the podium. And not a single one of them believe the Word of God. Not one of them. And because they don't believe, they are delusional. Just as we read in Isaiah 66, I will choose their delusions. All right, again, so the devil is not a being. <laughs> the devil's not a god. Hey, people are delusional. Absolutely delusional. Okay. Now, what is this here? I don't know what this is either. Let's just go back a little bit and see. Oh, oh, I, that's something. It's something. Hold on. Let's let's listen. For not for it is given unto the Gentiles, and the holy city shall they tread underfoot forty and two months. Okay. The thing that uh, has caused fundamentalists to reject this teaching is that the fact that they find sacrifices given in here we go. That, uh, passage that I gave you, Ezekiel 40 through 48, since they're hung up on the doctrine that salvation is only by grace without works, which it is hung up. You're hung up on this doctrine that you have eternal life if you believe in the Lord Jesus Christ. What's the matter with you? What do you think Jesus was telling the truth or something? In the church age, they can't submit to the fact that sacrifices in the temple on the new moon or on the Sabbath will ever be observed again, and they will be. You hear what he's saying? He's saying that you don't have eternal life. He's saying the Old Testament people, before Jesus came, didn't have eternal life. And they're going to go back, people are going to go back to animal sacrifices uh, because they 
have absolutely no understanding of something that's written in the book of Ezekiel, is my guess. No? Yeah, right there it is. Uh, yeah, hung up on the doctrine of eternal life. Salvation through, by grace, are you saved through faith? Well, that ain't true. That can't be true, because... Okay, so let, let's do this here. Oh, I, you know, where do I want to go? I mean, there's a couple of places. This is simple, basic stuff, and you are dumber than dog do if you don't get this. First of all, Jesus is the appropriation of our sins, and not ours only, but for the sins of the whole world. Oh, I forget, where's this at? Oh, I'm not going to have to. And he is the appropriation for our sins and not for ours only. But also for the sins of the whole world. All right. Oh, uh, there's another one. I got to think now. Oh, goodness sakes. I can't remember now. Can't remember nothing. Can't remember nothing. Can't remember nothing. Cannot remember a doggone thing. Oh, there it is. By the which will we are sanctified through the offering of the body of Jesus Christ once for all. All right, but according to Bozo the Clown, that's not good enough. That's not... That once, that once for all, that was just for, you know, a couple of bystanders that were over in the general area at that specific moment in time. In other words, you're dumber than dog do, and you're going straight to hell, fella. It is not possible that the blood of bulls and of goats should take away sins. Exodus, or uh, I'm sorry, Ezekiel says, Oh, that just right there, that uh, Hebrews 10, verse 4, absolutely, utterly destroys everything you've ever taught in your entire life because you're a GD fool. An absolute fool. And it's as if you've never read the Bible. Maybe you haven't gotten that far in the Bible yet. But what in the world is going on? The First Baptist Church, Unionville, Missouri. You're standing in front of God and everybody, and you have, have absolutely no understanding of the Lord Jesus Christ and what he has done. And you're pretending to be a preacher? Well, I know what happened. I know how you got in your position. You went to seminary school. You went to a Bible college. When you were a 19-year-old snot-nosed brat, you got yourself an education. And then you got hired on. And then now you're part of this business that they call the First Baptist Church Union in Unionville, Missouri. It's a business. The business of making money, of handing out a collection plate. You think you found a loophole where you could make money tax free. And you can and <laughs> Make a lot of money too, can't you? Huh? It's amazing. It's amazing. I was talking to one of these preachers at a mega church, and a gentleman came to him, said he needed $200 to go visit his son. And the guy gave um, the the head preacher, you know, I don't know what it was, uh, a bunch of, uh, what do you call that, uh, collateral or whatever, uh, in case he didn't come back. You know, here here's $200 worth of stuff, you know, if I don't come back, it's yours. It was very valuable stuff to me. Uh, I'm giving you my assurance that I will be back because I 
these are important to me I just need two hundred dollars to go visit my son and so the head preacher reluctantly gives the guy two hundred dollars and the head preacher is he's got money now he's got a lot of money very interesting to me very interesting to me because he should, well, I don't understand he should have just gave him the two hundred dollars and said enjoy your time if somebody asks you why would you turn them down what's that two hundred dollars gonna do for you are you going to take it with you into the life to come here after? I mean, really. Why? What, I mean, how in the world can you read? Uh-oh. Oh, no. I gotta think here. Where's this at? Um, give me a second, because I think. Yeah, what's that say? Matthew 5. Give to him that asks thee, and from him that would borrow of thee, turn not away. Why would you even, you know, worry? If somebody ask well because there's schneisters out there and they'll just try to con you out of two hundred dollars well let them let them and let's say a bum he says I need a uh, hundred bucks and I, that way I can get drunk for the next ten days well, you know, whatever I got it I gotta supply my alcohol habit guy living under a bridge just drinks booze all day long what's wrong with that What's wrong with that? The guy lives under a bridge. What kind of joy is he getting out of life? He's got one joy, and that's to drink booze. You want to deny him of his one joy in life for what? Because you are there. This guy's not a productive member of society. He's not, uh, he's not cleaning my shoes. I mean, really, why are people so hung up and reluctant to give people that are needy? I mean, look, they'll, they, you, they're commercial on TV, there's people over in Hungary that they need, they need food. The dogs are dying. Well, I want to give them money. You give money to an organization that you really you'll never see the effects of the money that you give, but you won't give money directly to a person in need. There's something wrong with people's hearts. Okay, I kind of went off on a tangent there. Uh, so the, the, these guys, uh, the, the this guy here. Submit to the fact that sacrifices in the temple. Wait, where were we at here? There will be sacrifices. What, I mean, what's going on here? They're hung up on the doctrine of salvation. They're hung up on the doctrine that salvation is only by grace without works. And, and, okay, so that's true. Salvation is not by the work that we did, but by the work that the Lord Jesus Christ has done for us. Otherwise, grace is no more grace. <laughs> and that's in the Bible, too. Right. These guys, none of them are. None of them. None of them are men of God. None of them. Okay, I don't know. What, this is just something I had. What in the world is this? Penile glam. Come on. That's comic book stuff. 
Oh, hey, I want to do, I forgot about this conversation here. I don't know. I, was, I could have done a whole video on this conversation here. We got one bozo saying, right? This, the resurrection has passed already. Okay. And then we got another guy. I'll have to weed through this because he he asked a, some, a couple of good questions here. One regarding warm wood. Maybe I can get to this tomorrow. Why don't I save this for for tomorrow possibly we'll see all right so Hugh I think Hugh's the one that started the conversation no yeah Hugh Bramlett he started a conversation he wanted I think wanted to talk about Donnie and I'm trying to tell him look man Donnie ain't nothing he ain't the man he's not even in charge of nothing right now and even if he becomes the king of the United States again it don't mean nothing. You're missing the obvious. <laughs> I mean, it's incredible, but of course it has to be this way. You're waiting for Dan Rather to come on the news and to tell you the truth about the world we live in, and that's never gonna happen. The woman is the Roman Catholic Church. She's the whore. The whore. She's pretending to be the wife. Excuse me. The great whore. She's not the wife. She's not the bride. She's a prostitute, a whore. She's a fake wife, a fake bride. Uh, you can't get that? Yeah, something wrong with your heart if you don't see it. But the woman, which is the Roman Catholic Church, is that great city which reigns over the kings of the U of the earth, including the United States. Reigns over the kings of the earth. All, have you ever heard the term all roads lead to Rome? Yeah. Yeah, they all lead to the Pope. The Pope is at the top. The Pope has always been at the top. And because that's lo be somehow uh, it's becoming less and less obvious because, you know, Dan Rather's not on the news telling us this. People are forgetting, not seeing it, and then being persuaded. And because of that, there's a falling away. And this has been going on for hundreds of years, all right, the falling away. And the more people fall away from the truth of the Word of God, the more people are not seeing that the Pope is the Antichrist. The more people that don't see that the Pope is the Antichrist, the more power the Pope has. And so now uh, he's got as much power as he's ever had in the history of the world including uh, way back in the days of Caesar, when he had power to make a decree that the whole world should be taxed. Now, this is important. Now, in Daniel, Daniel talks about four beasts until the end of the world. And that fourth beast is the Roman Empire. And that Roman Empire transitioned into the Roman Catholic church all right the roman empire transitioned the beast that was the roman empire and is not and yet is is the transformation from the physical empire into the spiritual empire whose deadly wound was healed and so i uh, propose this theory uh, this thought you know, a long time ago is that hey when Jesus laid down his life and took it back up and then ascended to heaven Caesar and his you know uh, think tank his group of of uh, people his uh, what do you call them uh, experts or the the wise men what have you they realized hey this guy He's done something that no man has ever done. We can't outdo what the Lord Jesus, what Jesus has done. Right. We, they said that we can't outdo what Jesus has done, but we can tag ourselves to what Jesus has did, and sort of what do you call it, usurp or to take advantage of uh, those that claim to be followers of Jesus and they po they pose themselves as one of them that also believe 
and then they try to take that power and influence for themselves and that's what they've been doing uh, you know what you know whether 700 years or 1700 years or whatever right I've been doing that for a long long time and uh, they're gaining more and more power more so today than 40 years ago I can feel it I know it things are different today than it was back in the 70s and 80s much different I, I can I'm a witness to it and uh, the young people today I, they don't have any idea no idea it's incredible anyways I'm rambling on more and more but uh, 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 I yeah so um what was I talking about here in evidence uh, all right so oh, goodness sakes the guy tried to say 70 years is there are 70 weeks he tried to say 70 weeks is 490 years well your math is way off Jack but the man of sin this Pope he sits in what he considers and what the world considers the temple of God. All right, so that's not the true temple. Jesus destroyed the temple, which is the body. Know ye not. <laughs> this, see, this is interesting. I wonder how many times. That's actually often. No, that's not it. Not once. Oh, not once does it say that. What about this? 17 times. Interesting. Let's go down a little bit just to right there no ye first corinthians 3 know ye not that ye are the temple of god all right so hey, people that don't believe won't will not be able to understand it regardless but we are the temple and this temple that we're in god entered it he came into the flesh god was manifest in the flesh and he tore down this temple and rebuilt it into an everlasting temple so the temple that he rebuilt we will enter into all right so when he returns in the clouds of heaven we will be lifted up and we will be changed in a moment in the twinkling of an eye into this new temple that he has built rebuilt for us it's not a building <laughs> Oh, I'm gonna. Uh, I feel like I could talk all day on this stuff. I really do. I will destroy this temple that is made with hands, and within three days I will build another made without hands. He's not talking about a building. He's talking about the body. Oh. We heard him say, I will destroy this temple that is made with the thing. That's what they said. Okay. How be it the most high dwells not in temples made with hands. See, uh, in Mark, for example... In Mark, for example, I feel like I I don't want to confuse anybody. I don't want to confuse anybody, so let's run through this real quick. Um, and bear, let's see, for many bear false witness against him, but their witness agreed not together, and there rose a certain and bear false witness against him, saying, We heard him say, so Jesus didn't actually say this, but this is what he said, Jesus said, is that I will destroy this temple that is made with hands, and within three days I will build another made without hands. All right, so. Um, so what he was referring to, he's way off. He's talking about laying down his life, right? He's talking about 
just like what we read in John chapter 1, I believe. Or is that John 1? Uh-oh. I feel like I'm... Is it John 3? I... I... No, 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 I don't know. I don't know. I don't know nothing. What in the world just happened here? Here, I better do it. No, it is John 1. It is John 1, isn't it? No. Oh my goodness sakes. Oh no. Spin, 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 spin. John 2. Bye. 1, 3, 2, God. Right there in the middle. But he spake of the body. I'm sorry, he spake of the temple of his body. And forty and six years was this temple in Belling, and wilt thou rear it up in three days? So they thought he was talking about the the building, but Jesus was talking about his body. All right. So they didn't understand, and so that's why in Mark we read the false uh, report. It was close, but not exact. All right. So, anyways, I'm going to try to. Get back to these comments here. Uh, Hugh Bramlett, I I perceive that he's asking honest questions. Mark Moore, greetings. This message is sent in love. This message is sent in love. Your friend. Sounds like you're a hippie cultist to me. Yeah, somebody, anybody that starts every single comment, I know without reading a single thing that this person is insane all right out of your mind and you're trying to say the resurrection already happened and that nothing means nothing and that the bible's already been fulfilled uh what 68 ad 70 ad i have no idea you have no idea what you're talking about you're basically saying that jesus christ is a liar all right, you don't know nothing. I, these, these preterists, man. I wonder if some of them, if they're just deceived, if they're fooled, easily fooled, or if maybe some of them are just uh, uh, well, I won't say. I get too. I'm getting too nasty here. Getting too. I saw. Maybe I'll go over this. Uh, um, tomorrow I, if I, I was trying to remember here I thought he said something to the effect that oh they had right there at the very bottom he's calling Jesus Christ a liar because he never came calling Jesus Christ a liar because he never came right The Lord is not slack concerning his promise, as some men count slackness, but is long suffering to us, word, not willing that any should perish, but all that all should come to repentance. See, for this they are willingly ignorant. Where is the promise of his coming? See, it must have already happened. It must have already happened. There must have already been the resurrection. It must have been. I mean, I don't want Jesus as a liar. I mean, maybe Jesus isn't a liar. Maybe Mark Moore 3530 is the liar. Huh? Yeah, I'm going to trust the Word of God. and Because I know what it says. And Hugh Bramlett, if you know what it says, good on you. I'm going to try to continue this conversation, buddy. Let's talk.